How are you folks? We are back in the woods and you might have noticed that the instant folding cabin that I made in last week's video, or two weeks ago nearly now, is looking a little bit different. First thing I did is I sealed the OSB with some blackjack bitumen paint. So it's, it's totally black, it's like stealth black now, although there's nothing kind of stealthy about it in the woods. But it's really good stuff, like I say, bitumen based, and we've had rain for the last week solid, and especially today, and it's beading off and it's just been running off perfectly, which is good because OSB, I know, is, is really not good in the rain. The only reason I chose it because it was cheap and it's light. Ideally, I should have used something like, you know, hardwood ply, but there's a weight factor involved there. And I wanted to be able to push this on a wheelbarrow. That was the whole point of it. I wanted to be able to push it on a wheelbarrow and keep it as light as possible. I know I could have added wheels to it at the bottom, but that wasn't kind of the plan for this one. It was just to be able to push it in on a wheelbarrow, take it off the wheelbarrow, put it in the back of the car, lean it up flat against the garage wall, and then bring it back out whenever I kind of wanted to. So it had to be light. But the OSB is not good in the rain. It does have a waxy substance on the surface so that when it does rain, it, it keeps it a little bit waterproof, but in general, it's an interior wood. Um, so I sealed it with blackjack. Really pleased with it. It's horrible to paint on, but it's so good now, it's a lot more waterproof. Then it was the skylight. I snapped the last one with the acrylic. This whole thing was one big piece of acrylic and it just meant when it was on the hinges, it was really flimsy and it snapped and I didn't have a full size, so it was really annoying. So what I did is I got the set, a big long piece of OSB, measured it the same as the other side, secured it down with some hinges, and then cut out a big section in the middle, had some leftover acrylic anyway, uh, cut that into kind of an, uh, an oval shape, and then secured that with some screws all the way along here, and then I sealed it with some roof kind of gutter sealant all around the edge. To, uh, to keep the edges all watertight. And now I have my skylight, but the frame is so much more sturdy, look. It's, I'm really pleased with that. I know it's a simple thing, folks, but that's what I should have done in the first place. So we now have a skylight, and it still folds with the roof a lot better. Now, if you're new to this episode and you haven't watched the last episode, you're probably thinking, what on earth is this? This is essentially a tiny folding cabin that completely packs flat. And that was the idea of the project. I'll link to the previous episode up here. It had to be three things. It had to be able to fold totally flat on itself and it be transportable out into the woods on a wheelbarrow. And then it had to be able to be set up with zero power tools. So it could just fold and set up with zero power tools. There was a third thing and I can't remember what it was now, but essentially this is it. So they're the two changes I've made so far. Now I've got some more changes to make and we're gonna get the stove on and we're gonna do a night in camp out in here. So thank you for watching, let's crack on. So that's the ridge done. I've kept it pretty simple. It's just a half of a drain pipe, a gutter pipe. If you remember before, the door opened with this handle down like that, and it made it really awkward to climb in and out. And that's what made it a bit more like a chicken coop. Uh, I've left the handle where it is, but the hinges have now moved to here. So the door actually opens like a normal door. And it means it's much easier to get in and out now by stepping in front of it, whereas I couldn't before. The next thing I'm going to try and do is interior lighting. Rather than just have a kind of camping light that can just hang from the middle, I've got something different. I'm not sure if this is going to work at all, but 
I figure it'd be quite cool if it did. Uh, there were, I did have two of them, but unfortunately again I've forgotten the second one. But we'll see if this works anyway, and hopefully for tonight we can have some nice ambient lighting. no idea if this is going to work, but if it does, it will be epic. Well, filthy. Better. Forgot to say that for food on this trip, I've brought with me, uh, I think it's a German combat ration. So it's, uh, this is the Type 10. Pretty sure it's German, NATO approved. It's like a 24 hour one, I believe. There's all the menu and everything on there, which is quite nice because it's actually broken down into English there. Dutch, French, maybe it's a Dutch one actually. I'm not sure, but this says like made in German, Germany down here. Either way, it's got loads of things, pork jelly, nut mix, peanuts, energy bars, muesli, and then the meals there. The MREs. Tuck into some of these pork, je pork jelly, spicy curry, high protein snacks. We've had so much rain. I can't tell you how much rain we've had the last 24 hours. Oh, it's unbelievable. It's so boggy around the cabin as well. One of the sesame bars as well. Need some energy. As well as a folding cabin, we've got to have a folding stove. That's the stove. It's pretty small. It's one I've used a fair amount in my videos before. I need it to be small because it's pretty tight on space in there. metal here, left over, tuck that in the corner, the stove can go on that and then I've also got a piece of wood to go uh, like this basically and then I'm going to put, I've got something to go against it here but it's just so my legs don't touch the stove on my sleeping bag it's a temporary thing, I think, I mean, I could have made it longer in hindsight out here and then screwed it into the wall. Obviously this part wouldn't have been flat packed, but yeah, looking back at it now, I can make a little compartment here for the stove. So the stove sits perfectly there and then my sleep area is here. But I've got something I'm gonna put against this bit, I'll show you, which is only temporary. <laughs> Don't judge me. Like I say, only temporary, but I've basically got some fire bricks because I have them in the woods from the pizza oven and it's more to protect the, the OSB but I'm not going to have the stove on long enough for the OSB to uh, combust, let's say. So I'm just going to have them like that really. For now, just because once the stove's lit and it's hot it's going to be, I don't want to touch it, so I just have it. Okay. I'm happy with that. Now I've got to get the stove pipe on. Got my vent open, so there's plenty of ventilation, but there's gaps all over this cabin, so there's going to be ventilation anyway. And I can lift the entire roof up here if I need to.
So I decided to lay the fire bricks like that. It's just a little bit easier. Uh, when they were stacked vertically, they were just falling over. Whereas now they can lean against the metal plate. And if I lean against that with my feet, it's okay because they're kind of wedged up against it. I think we're ready to light. Stove is set up. The lighting is ready, but you won't be able to see it until it's dark. So I guess it's time to chop up some firewood and then we can get the stove going and start cooking the, the military rations, which I'm very much looking forward to because I'm hungry. I'm really excited to see the, the skylight tonight as well. Uh, it's, this, it's the little things. I one of these powdered energy drinks into my water before I chop firewood. This one is grapefruit. <laughs> Give it a shake. It is lovely, it's really nice. Got the energy. Let's do this. Spring is definitely in the air. The birds are out. The bluebells are, are really coming up now. I think they'll be out in probably another month or so. And then a uh, wooden enemy, that will be coming out soon too. Ironically, they're both toxic plants. I can see lords and ladies down here on the floor near me. The wild garlic I've got towards the, the uh, eastern end of this woodland is, it's amazing. It's coming up so much already. It's literally, it's ready to forage now, which is great. Bring us here. The only thing is, is there's been, just been so much rain. This last month, six weeks or so, February into January, has been horrendous for rain. I'd say the, the worst, certainly I've probably experienced or remember in February. It, it's just been awful. Uh, but it is what it is. It just makes things so boggy. Even at the front of the cabin down here, it's just mud pie. Everywhere in the woods is really soft and squidgy. I've just brought over a chopping block that I've had around, lying around the woodlands for a while. This Left me TA axe at home as well. I've had a shocker. Last checks before the stove's lit. Check it's all there, because once I light it, it's going to be too hot to mess around with. Right, here we go. Let's get that right back there. Do another one for good luck. We're lit. <laughs> oh boy. What have I done? Load it up. Crank it up. Great thing is I can actually see the chimney flue through the skylight. I can see how the drawer is going on the chimney via the cabin without having to go outside. Epic. There is smoke. I guess these are the drinks. More biscuits, more drink. That's the warm drinks and biscuits and cappuccinos. 
There's some muesli there. Noodles, something spaghetti bolognese. I can see the word bolognese. Say add hot water. I'm not sure. 450 mil, there's the fill line. So it's getting pretty warm in there. I'm gonna see if I can prop it open with a bit of firewood. This might not work at all, to be fair. But I don't think it is. Wait, stay, stay. Okay, it does work. Now there's some heat really piling out of there but it's going to be a lot more bearable inside really small combined wood boxes and wood stoves are not the best combination so i'm obviously very wary of uh, toxic fumes carbon monoxide things like that i've got the alarm but also i'm propping that open because it's really uncomfortable inside it's so warm but it's nice now that it's open you can hear this squelching, this mud pie. Thankfully, I built the cabin on legs. That's how much rain we've had. The cabin is not warped at all. Glad I painted it. Water is nearly boiling for my my food. I've got some firewood drying down here. Lots of firewood in my little corner. It's cramped, but I like it. I really like the fact that I can open this window like on the hinge because it was definitely getting too hot and smelly with the uh, OSB. Not a nice smell. The concept is working so far. <laughs> cool. This is gonna be where my feet are gonna be. And that's why I've got the protective barrier bit here. My head's gonna be up that end. Yeah. Oh, I just love that I can see out. <laughs> How cool is this? There's a bit of a mark on the skylight there, but I can see everything and it's so cool. It's toasty. <laughs> it's very toasty. I love it though. My foot box. The best thing about this cabin by far is this. And that is why I chose acrylic. It's horrible to work with, but it's so, so clear. It's literally like looking without any glass there. It's so good. Just using this camera for the moment, guys, because it's a lot easier to maneuver around. That's what it looks like. This smells amazing, the spaghetti bolognese. Really nice, really rich. Put a bit more water in. I would say that is the best spaghetti bolognese military ration I've had, whatever this one is. We can have next. Must open the fruit mix, I think. Oh, 
Nice. So you might have wondered what was rigging up earlier and I've basically pinned it in with these cable clips and this is a bit of strip lighting that runs all the way across the ridge line. Look at that sky. Wow. Hold on a minute. Look at that sky. So sunset, we're about 15 minutes after sunset and look at the skylight showing the dusk. That is absolutely awesome. That's really cool. So pleased with the skylight. That's been so, so worth the hustle with the acrylic to get it right. And I can still open it if I need to. Anyway, moment of truth. I've pegged it in all the way around, up through the ridge, and it goes to about here. Luckily it doesn't go all the way back there because that's where it's hotter with the stove and things like that. So it just it runs via just a USB cable and I've got a power bank here which has two USB slots. So in theory, plugged in, it's powered on and it comes with an RGB remote. So I've got all sorts of different colours but we're just going to go with on but I'm going to turn my head torch off first because I've got no idea what it's just going to be like. Here we go, folks. On. Oh, ho, 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 ho. look at that. That is cool, right? I know I haven't got much brain up here, but that is, that is worth it. Genius. <laughs> oh, I love it. I've got it on changing color at the moment. You see that? It's just changing. Oh, look how much light it's throwing in here. I think that's the brightest it goes. Yeah. So I can dim it. No, I can't. Hold on. Let me choose red. No, no, no. Where's white? White. Right, white lighting. And this is, there, I can dim it. Oh, ambient setting. Oh, look at that, it goes right down. That is awesome. <laughs> what do you think? I'm really, really pleased. Um, what have we got? We've got, we've got flash. Whoa, that's a bit disco. It's changing colours during the disco. Uh, strobe. 
That's what we had it on. Nice, gentle change. Fade. Again, gentle. This is the sort of stuff you stick behind your TV. You know when you have like a TV backlight and you just plug it into the USB of your TV and then smooth. Nope, that's not smooth. I think fade's cool. Oh, that is so good. <laughs> I'm recording outside, so I'm not sure what it looks like, but I'll have to review the footage in a minute. That is that is really, 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 I know, sorry guys. I got a bit too excited about that, but I'm just well chuffed. <laughs> Look at it. That is awesome. This is the drinks. Ah, okay, so there isn't hot chocolate, there is tea. Well, let's have tea. I'm not gonna lie, as an Englishman, this seems pretty sus for tea. I don't see a tea bag here. Oh, ah, powder. That, how is that tea? What is this? It's no Yorkshire tea. I mean, it looks like tea. It's like instant tea. I don't have a thermometer in here, but it's so warm with the roof down. It's going to let the uh, probably let the fire go out. because so I've got my three seasons sleeping bag. Right, let's give this strange tea a go. There is, there is a hint of tea taste to it. Got my stove, I haven't died yet of carbon monoxide poisoning. I haven't died of the off gassing of the, that was a good point by the way. So someone commented in my last video, well actually loads of you commented, I really appreciate that. Uh, on the OSB, using OSB. Loads of you obviously slammed me for it. Rightly so, using OSB, like chipboard, cheap OSB to build something like this. Uh, outside to begin with where it's exposed and with a wood stove inside both real no-nos I was aware of what I was doing in terms of it was only a short-term thing it's not something I would be living in um, it's probably not something I camp super long term in because it is quite cramped on space I have tents a lot bigger than this but but someone made a great comment and that is that OSB is like l loads of ch chips chipboard like loads of wood chip glued together and like compressed together and the thing is is when you use a wood stove and you get it hot enough it the the, the glue begins to like give off gas like a smell so it's like a sweet smell but it's actually at first you're a bit like oh this smells quite nice but it's really not it's not a, a pleasant smell at all so cheers for the guy who gave me the heads up because i actually expected that to happen having not really smelt it before and yeah, it happened, the off-gassing of the glue and I could smell it, which is why I lifted this up. And when I lifted this up, it totally went. and I couldn't smell it anymore. So um, yeah, if I were to do this again, I would definitely use hardwood ply as the, the surround uh, instead of OSB. But I'm being cautious, I've got ventilation, there's gaps everywhere and I can lift this roof up and I've got carbon monoxide alarm. Moment of truth, will it fit? That is perfect.
And just to give you an idea of my head, the door, <laughs> some little bits over here that I've got out of my bag. I've put my backpack underneath the cabin because there's loads of room and I don't need it in here. And then at the other end, I've got foot room. That is stopping my mat from hitting the stove. My water bottles are a bit close there. But yeah, the stove, there's a good enough gap that I'm not getting, my, my sleeping bag won't melt and burn against the stove. So that's handy, that seems to be working. Right guys, it's getting late. I'm gonna try and get some sleep. Hopefully the sky is clear a bit more than what they are. It's a little bit cloudy at the moment. Can't see any stars, but hopefully it clears. Alright guys, I'll see you in the morning. Morning. I've actually been up a, a while now because it got so bright in here. There's lots of condensation on the window, the skylight. I've wiped it off with a cloth, but I slept pretty good. And unfortunately, I don't know if you guys can see from there, but the, the glue on the porthole, I don't know if it's from the heat of the stove, the porthole halfway through the night just fell off near my head. So that was uh, interesting. But I've got some airflow now and the sun is up. Been up, like I say, a couple of hours. And it's um it's a beautiful morning so i'm gonna get the stove going but i don't have much room with the uh to move with the mattress and the sleeping bag and i'll pack these away to give me a bit more room Found some uh, bits of off cuts of wood as well where I've been making things. Just throw it all in. Let's get more. Look at that. What are you to wake up to? Müsli mit Apple, Apfelen und Erdbeeren. Berry, Müsli with apple and berry, Erdbeeren, something berry. It doesn't, it doesn't seem like there's much in these pouches, pouches but it's deceiving. It's all kind of vacuum packed. That's not bad to be fair. The water's boiling. So give that cappuccino a go, I think. <laughs> cappuccino. I'm gonna give these cookies a go too. Cookies with, with chocolate. Everything went out of date September last year, November, September. But I'm feeling all right still, so that's good. Ooh, they're like mini double chocolate cookies. They're tiny. They are lovely. I wish I'd opened those last night. Is this going to take my lips off? Oh, it's hot. Just found this like solid chocolate bar in the rations. Look at that. Dark chocolate, I think. Again, wish I found it last night. Coffee dipped chocolate bar. Let's give it a go.
That's amazing. Dark chocolate cappuccino coffee. So much like you would pack away a tent after your camping trip, it's time for me to pack away my cabin. <laughs> quicker than a tent. I genuinely think that is quicker than a tent. That took me a minute and 30 seconds, maybe two minutes. I'm not gonna pack it away totally and barrow it out of here because there's things I'd like to do with it. Maybe move it around the woodland, camp in a different area. Um, I don't want to, or, or, or tweak and change it. So I'm gonna keep it as it is for now and just put a tarp over it to just protect it for a little bit longer. never really know that under that is a cabin with a wood stove and a skylight and that's why I'm calling it the black stealth cabin because you could literally flat pack it move it into a bush or dense area of vegetation set it up get the wood stove out all sorts it's good fun um, I've had a laugh making this it's been uh, well, it's actually been a little bit tricky at first trying to come up with the concepts and the design but um, I'm sure there's better ways to do it. I'm really pleased with how it came out, especially where I came back to tweak it for kind of version two. It's just a prototype, it's a bit of fun. I hope you guys have enjoyed the episode. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoy this type of thing, feel free to subscribe. There's gonna be more like this coming and there's check out the playlist below where I'll link to our pallet cabin playlist. We built a cabin with my dad made completely of recycled pallets. We, re we even recycled the nails. Um, so I'll link that 
in the description below. But thank you all so much for watching. I do appreciate it. And I will see you guys in the next one.